Hi, this is Chloe from Inner Whispers. Today I'm going to be unboxing the Tarot of Delphi, created and curated by J.D. Hildegard Hinkle. Um, this is a deck that's been out for a while, it's a, a self-published deck, but for quite a while you couldn't get hold of it in England theoretically because of uh, some of the images no, not being out of copyright or some, some such, but that seems to have been overcome now, so I did get one of the last copies that were available, I think, but hey, they may bring out another edition. So let's dive in and have a look at the cards. So the box is very sturdy, nicely done, quite attractive as well in terms of colours and images and little sort of not dead straight lines either. So that's the box. The booklet is fairly compact and not great publishing values. It's a little bit tricky to read because it's off-cut at an angle and a little bit tight into the edge. Still, it has interesting text and little keywords for each card as well. So pretty much little white book material really. Uh, but it does give you information about the particular image that has been used, who it's by, when it was painted, as well as a description to match the card meaning and the keywords, as I say. So that's quite nice. And there are even a couple of spreads. Celtic Cross 3 card. Nothing earth shattering. There's a title card. And then the cards themselves don't seem to be quite in order, so we'll have a look through these. The Empress, the Magician, the High Priestess, which is one of my favourite images, I have to say. And the Empress again. So there are two empresses, a nude one and a non-nude one, perhaps. The emperor, so the hierophant, and clearly, I mean, this is a similar idea to, for example, Cat Black's Golden Tarot and also the Infinite Visions Tarot, which is another self-published one that did something of this kind very beautifully. Um, the images do seem to be nicely chosen. The Hermit. I like the retitling of this as Threads of Fate. That works quite well. Interesting, this looks like the Oracle at Delphi or some such. I wouldn't have put that as justice and there's no sword. But, you know. Oh, and instead of the hanged man, we have the one torn asunder. So there's a few little differences. And clearly, the images, oh, the siren instead of the devil. That's quite fun. The images are by different artists. The shipwreck instead of the tower. Quite a different take on some of the cards. Uh, 
So if you like your decks fully consistent, this one isn't. For example here they have a, a round image for whatever reason, the garden for the world. I guess that kind of works, but it, it does look a little... It's quite striking that there is that difference. And here the fool finally, unnumbered. Moving on to the suit of coins or pentacles. These images do represent quite well traditional ideas. This is interesting, I think I've seen a very similar thing for the Four of Cups, for example in the Druid Craft, it looks a lot like that. But I can see why it would fit with the Four of Coins. So the Rider weight base of these is quite easily apparent for the most part. Not so much on this one, I have to say, Seven of Coins. She doesn't look like she's actually doing much of anything. Whereas that one works for the apprentice. And yes, for the lady of independent means. So the images are quite lovely. It does feel a little strange that they have quite different borders depending on the image that was available, I suppose. The courts are renamed. We have the devotee, the artisan, the hero, and the enchantress. Suit of swords. Dear me, they're all looking glum so far. I guess that's a lot of people's approach to the sword suit. And that one is quite different from what I would expect of the Six of Swords, but it will be interesting to consider. Doesn't look there like they're in calm waters yet, but maybe they are trying to get there. Someone stealing away clothes. She doesn't seem all that trapped by anything, but hey. And it's funny, there's a very similar image in one of the Baba Studios decks, which I think they use it for the Nine of Wands. So this is, yeah, I don't really see, well, nightmares so much in this. Hmm. This is a beautiful image actually, Fallen Angel for the Ten of Swords, Dying Fallen Angel. So some images are ones that I've seen before. Oh, here the devotee, I guess that's the page, is a male this time around. The artisan, a little bit hard to tell which one it is. That's the knight. The hero, I presume, is the king. And the enchantress, the queen. I guess because she has scrolls around her, but otherwise I wouldn't have th thought of this as the Queen of Swords, I must say. But I do like this Ace of Wands. And yes, that works perfectly for the Two of Wands. And three with three goats, <laughs> that's fun. Four of Wands, plenty of celebration. Five of Wands very unusual in that there is only one person in it, which, given lots of the others, had more. A triumphal parade. So altogether, as I say, the Rider Waite basis of this is very clear and easy to see. Hmm. I'm going to have to look into the story of that. That's not something that I would immediately have thought of for the Nine of Wands, though that is quite a famous painting, I believe. And the Ten of Wands, wow, yeah. So then we have the devotee, the page presumably, the artisan, I thought of as the knight once again. Not a young, and here the hero. Hmm. And the enchantress of wands. There's quite a lot of nudity in the deck, which doesn't bother me in the slightest, but I know that for some people that's going to be a turn off. And that does work well for the Four of Cups. 
So it is an attractive deck. It's one that will be reasonably easy to e read with. Um, and I think it'll be nice as well to look into the stories of the artwork. Page of Cups, Knight of Cups, King of Cups, hmm, not very, well, I was going to say not very heroic looking, but I guess, you know, he's got, it looks almost more like his mother and his sister, I don't know, not doing it for me as the King of Cups this, I guess you could say he's got two women dangling or whatever, but, yeah whereas the Enchantress of Cups is lovely. So, that's the Tarot of Delphi. Let's take a look. We have a fully reversible back. Quite elegant. Simple. It's interesting because it's very dark compared to the images. The images are all much lighter. I would have expected a different kind of back. But the browns do match with the sort of colour palette overall, I would say. And can't quite hold the whole stack in a single hand, so that's going to be a little bit of an issue for shuffling. However, I think that they are thin enough that you will still be able to riffle. Let's give that a quick go while we're here. Yep, that'll work. Not the easiest thing at the moment, but yes. So, the cards feel, the card stock feels quite nice, even though, as I say, it is a slightly thicker stack than I would like. But it is going to shuffle reasonably well, and the cards do feel firm, but not overly rigid. Fairly easy to read and to shuffle with. Blessed be.